Welcome to Teen Camp Week. We recognize that it's different right now, which, you know, is fine. Everything's different right now, but we're still having Teen Camp. Well, let's look at some of the things that we really liked and just remember them. One of those, Moose Games, one of my personal favorites. <laughs> Alongside small groups, where our leaders help lead small groups by age and grade. Uh, and remember, uh, deep conversations in the cabin is something we can never do. Man! Mm, cabins! Woo! And our great speakers. We have one every year. It's always an incredible time to have a great speaker. And along with the speaker, we have an incredible worship. Woo! You know, I can sing of your love forever. I can sing. And somehow it's better than that. And we have prayer stations done by the one and only Derek Parson. And, well, we also have the epic end of week shaving cream battle. Welcome to a special <laughs> Camp Elevate Week. Hi, welcome to Elevate Online. I'm Noah, I'm the summer intern. So super excited to have you here. So here's just a couple of announcements for you. First, we got our texting service. Text Elevate Student to 31996 and you get all of our updates, all of our fun things, see what events are happening. And you know, especially in this time of COVID to figure out just what's going on. Uh, follow us on Instagram at LNC underscore Elevate. We post updates, funny videos, and you basically just get to see what's popping. ElevateParents.org, uh, we get to check out this. It's not just for your parents, but it's for you. So check the updates on there if you don't follow us on Instagram and all that. Uh, service this week, Lower Nazarene Church. Uh, it's Sunday at 10 a.m., also on Zoom and Facebook if you're not comfortable with coming out. You can watch it online, watch it with your family, sit down, make popcorn. Might be too early for that. Mass are required if you are in person. Let's sit with your family. Doors open five minutes before. So, hope to see you there. Zoom or Facebook is, again, another safe option. Uh, young Adult Ministry, YAMS, if you are a recent graduate, uh, we meet this Sunday at 7.30. And if you want to get the updates on that and you're real interested, text YAMS to 31996 and just to receive text updates to see where everything is. And Teen Camp Week, that's this week, which is super exciting. Um, we're doing a lot as Elevate, uh, Wednesday through Friday. So it's super exciting. Um, we have more info on that. And basically, in Teen Camp Week, we have each morning, we'll kick off with a video. And this video will be a devotional from different, you know, students across the Mid-Atlantic District. And then in the evening, we'll end the day with a list of thoughts for the day, a video from youth leaders across the Mid-Atlantic District. So you'll see familiar faces. You'll probably see us. It's a good time. So follow Mad Teen Camp on Instagram. That's at Mad Teen Camp. Just get updates, just to see all these evos, see everything that's happening. And yeah, so here's what I was talking about Wednesday through Friday. Uh, basically we have Elevate, normal Elevate, seven through eight. It's a good time. Uh, Thursday we have the Teen Camp Digital Experience. Uh, well, we, you also get a free Elevate t-shirt. Derek and I will be sporting them. We'll give them away to you. We're super excited, but just on that night. And then Friday, we're going to have an outdoor movie. It's going to be a good time. I'm going to watch Napoleon Dynamite. It'll be at 8.30 at the Hill slash Hudson home. It's a really good time, so I hope to see you there. And yeah, Thursday, uh, July 23rd, doors open at 6.30. Again, free t-shirt. Super excited to have you there. It'll be a beautiful time, the outdoor movie. And here's the address if you're looking for it. Um, yep, snacks will be provided. Please bring a lawn chair. We don't have enough for everybody. I'm sure you don't want to sit in church chairs. So, yeah, that's all the updates I have for you. But tonight we have food madness.
Hi, I'm Pastor Derek. And I'm the intern Noah. And today we're gonna to answer the age old question, which little Debbie is the best? That's right, it's time for Elevate's first ever Food Madness. It's a special Little Debbie edition. Did you miss not having March Madness? I did, as you can tell, I'm wearing my favorite UK player of all time, John Wall. Yeah? Uh, yeah, he's on my t-shirt right now, so. Yeah. yeah. There's been a lot of things that have been canceled, and we thought, let's at least do what we can for those of you who missed out on March Madness. It's July, we're not calling it July Madness, we're calling it Food Madness, because mm -hmm. we're taking foods against each other. We're starting with 16 different Little Debbies going head to head, and we're gonna be trying them, each one, and we're going to uh, probably, yeah, have too much sugar today. Yeah, we might put on a few pounds, but we're gonna decide. We have 16 different ones. We have the bracket for you to fill out right now. You fill it out right now. You fill it out when you get home. Do whatever. Well, um, they, actually, they, they have to have already filled it out. Oh, if, yeah, if yeah, you do it now, this. If you do it now, you're cheating. Yeah, so we don't want you to If cheat. you haven't turned it in yet, you're cheating. If, yes. if you do it now. So you should have it out now to see, follow yourself. Yeah, right. and figure out and see if yeah. you're right. Because Derek and I are going to figure out which one is best. We're going to go from the 16 to the 8 to the 4. And then you guys are going to decide actually the winners. Yes, so there's going to be some interaction. But as we told you last week, hopefully you filled out a bracket to see who got the most right, anticipating what we're going to choose and the group as a whole uh, when we get there. So let's let's dive into it, man. Let's, let's go for it. Yeah. Do, but... I feel not properly dressed. Yeah, I feel like, look, I'm supporting John Wall, but I feel like a little bit underdressed. I think we both know what we could do. Yeah, so let's go change. We're on the same page. Yeah. Let's we'll be this. right back. Yeah, so. Oh. Um. So we weren't on the same page. Um, I really thought we were thinking of the same thing. I was little Debbie. Get it? March but, Madness. Yeah. This is awkward. Well, let's get to it. Uh, yeah. Oh. So as you can see, these are the 16 that we will be starting with and going through two at a time against them till the final four when you're going to help us choose the winner. Let's dive in. Let's eat some little Debbie. Yeah, let's go to round one. You have your bracket. So let's see how this goes. Yep, let's go. All right, so round one, we have chocolate donuts versus powdered donuts. I didn't know Little Debbie's actually made donuts, but we found them. And so this, this is really a deeper question is the controversial, controversial, see if I can get that word out, chocolate versus powdered. Yes, yeah, so let's start with the chocolate. Ooh, chocolate. Air hit ah. and then say, oh. Yep, that's why I remember chocolate donuts taste like. <coughs> yeah. You okay? Yeah, this is dry. It's so dry. Really? Mm -hmm. That's true, it's not the freshest donut. It's definitely not like a, yeah, like a Krispy Kreme right off the That's thing. Mm. I'm going right in. This is even drier. <laughs> uh-huh. I think the chocolate, I'm sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. You're gonna see a lot of that. For me, uh, this is my thing. The chocolate actually makes it not as dry because it kind of wraps it. I do agree. This powder is also messy. I don't want to be too messy. Yeah. And with the chocolate, if it melts on your fingers, you can just lay it off. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about like, you know, some people are like, well, chocolate on your hands if you shake someone's hand. We're not shaking hands right now. So it's not a problem. Yeah. No. So it's easy for me. I'm voting chocolate. What do you think? I'm voting chocolate. All right. Well. Powder, get out of here. It seems like this one is some favorites. I remember eating these in school and I remember eating these for lunch at my grandmother's house. So let's dive in. I'll do- Let's do zebra. Zebra? Zebra? Area? Yeah. Class. Classic. Oh my God. There's something weird about, even when they change it, it's like the same thing, mm -hmm. but slightly different. It's something about the zebra cake version is its own thing. Big fan. Me too. All right, we'll dive into the muffins next. A lot of sugar. Oh goodness, yeah. But, on that one, but you know, little muffins, they come in their own little baggies. Mm-hmm, yeah. And remember, zebra come two in a pack. Mm -hmm. We split ours, so that's something to remember too. 
Yeah. But these well, come in four in a pack. Yeah, there's like four. Um, it tastes processed. My vote here is yeah, yeah. I don't like these. They're it like, actually tastes awful. bad. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like I said it tastes like the plastic. chocolate chips taste stale, like they have been around some. We know what the yeah. Boom. Zebra cakes, muffins. Come on. Nope. Yeah. All right, for this round, we have unicorn cakes versus birthday cakes. Two that I had never heard of. Have you? No, and I didn't know these existed. Me I've never neither. had them. I'm excited because I'm always excited to learn about a new unhealthy snack food. Mm, you yeah. want to do unicorn first? Let's go for it. It's the magic of unicorn. There's a whole display for this in Walmart. This no, itself, it was a huge display. Like, oh man. Ooh, I can smell it. It smells oh, good. Right. Think. <laughs> I like that. It deserves a display. Wow. Look, it has like a special cream in it that's like another flavor itself. It's not just cream. Mm -hmm. Strawberry, sparkling strawberry. Yeah, uh, I gotta cleanse. Uh, yeah, I gotta cleanse my palate after that one. Definitely sparkle. Yeah, that was good. All right, birthday cake. Birthday. It's your birthday. It looks good. I like. There, there could be better sprinkles, honestly. Yeah. I'm not a sprinkle fan, so I don't care. Solid, not bad cake. But after having this one, does this one taste kind of bland? Well, this one tastes drier because this one has more icing in it. Mm. Yeah, it does. But it's not an overwhelming icing. Like, look at the difference between the two. Like, and I'm not a sprinkle fan, and these things are huge, these sprinkles, mm. and so they, they're just waxy taste that takes but even more. Pace yourself, man. We got a lot more to go oh, through. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling the unicorn. What are you, what are you thinking? I took two bites of this for a reason. We're gonna go unicorn. We're gonna keep the unicorn. Yeah. We're gonna, we birthday? Gotta it's nobody's birthday. Get out of here now. On to the next. Mm -hmm. All right, our palate's all cleansed. We're on to the next. Uh, this is honey bun versus strawberry, which is things I don't think what I would think to go together, but it was all random. Yeah, we ran so, yeah. So let's start with the honey bun. It's first. We're diving in, man. It's classic. I, it's like, this was like a quick breakfast. Yeah. And I, Pop Tarts went around. Like, dick. Mm. I've had these in a really long time. Yeah, no. I used to go to the skate park and get these all the time. I know this reminds me of when I worked at the radio station in college. Mm. If it was late at night, there was a vending machine uh -huh. in the hallway. This would be my dinner. This and like uh, chips. Like, it was these the are, worst. It was so bad for these you. These are very nostalgic. Like, yeah. But, oh, these wow. are so different flavors. So, but nice. nostalgic, but I don't know if in a good way because it reminds me how gross I felt the rest of the night because I was eating terrible. But it was college. I used to be excited for these, but I was- Strawberry, this was the fancy ones. I remember when you used to be able to get Little Debbie's for a buck, that's how old I am. These were the first ones that I remember being more than a dollar. And you really? did, and you got less. So these were, these were the fancy, this was the high life, fancy life. That's good. Do you, do you not like it? Do you not like it? Uh-uh. Dude, now, okay. What I remember tasting like is not as good. Like, my memory's better than what if they, they actually taste now. they doubled in price, I think they should taste better. Well, these have doubled too. I mean. These have kept the same flavor. These have. No, this this flavor is, the, the, to be fair, they haven't changed their flavor. I'm getting old, so sweet things don't taste as good anymore. Like, it's, it's a real thing, guys. Um, so my judgment on this is this stays moist. This is good. This has a good flavor, but it's dry okay. and a bit too much. Okay. So I'm going to give it a benefit out because I, I went into this with a bias. Okay. Yeah. I was like automatic. Okay. So let me try it. Uh, mm. I came in unbiased mm. and you can do whatever you want, but my vote is that honey buns deserve to win. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Man, this is tough. All right, I'm still leaning short, strawberry shortcake. All right, so it's a tie, so we're gonna judge it by rock, paper, scissors. Yep, this round we're gonna do different challenges if we have to tie, so best out of three, ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, go. 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 <laughs> yes! So guess what that means? Honey buns, get out of there! 
Next round. <laughs>
as like a Swiss cake roll. It's like a giant Swiss cake it's roll. It's bigger than a Swiss cake roll. Yeah, but you only get one. Yeah. There's so much cream in it. Yeah. Swiss cake rolls work better in the original form, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I do like it better than this. Compared to the spin wheels, there's no way that this could have lost. <laughs> it would have been hard. So sorry, spin wheels, but I lost my hat. <laughs> Next round. <laughs>so we are coming to the final round of the uh first rounds of eliminations and so i dude how are you feeling gross <laughs> eating all this processed dry food is gross that strawberry roll is horrible oh you're just bitter because it made it through dude my oh, i can tell i'm feeling twitchy and so but we got one more for this first round of eliminations uh look look at these look at these fine fine before selections before we eat a salad let's look at the ones that are out of this <laughs> world we have star crunch cosmic brownie let's start with this one honestly i was late to the game trying these yeah when i first saw them i thought it was just rice covered in chocolate oh dude no these are magical also it's interesting so we picked we used a randomizer to pick the matchups yeah and this is a mac matchup yeah yeah like look it's it's out it's outer it's out of this world it's like crazy. themed, right? Cosmic brownies, Star Crunch. Look at these things. Yep. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. Wow, Reminds me of my grandma. My she always had these on hand. Mm -hmm. Mine are good. Mm. These are fantastic. Mm. I love these. Also, I'm enjoying that they're not extremely sweet at this point in the game. Not like heavy and not I, very sweet. It's yeah. going to do probably better later it, in the rounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this one's a classic. You would trade everything you had in your lunchbox for these. See, when I was a kid, I didn't like these. It wasn't until I was older I started to like them. I think they were too dense. Like, these things, these are like If you saw at someone, you could, as across the lunchroom, you tried to trade it. Yeah. I'm sorry it's not considered, a, like, you know, too dangerous to have in the lunchroom. What crazy is, holy crap, that is still so dense. It's like a brick. What's crazy? What's that? I did nothing to it. <laughs> I told um, you. It's it's more, uh, it's, whoa, sorry, Cosmic Brownie. We Brandy. used to, I think that was God telling us something. Oh, really? Wow. Um, Getting mystical about it. But in all honesty, this is dense. This is a piece of fudge, not a brownie. That's my problem. See, I'm not a fudge man. All right. So, I mean, I know my vote is Star Crunch. With, Mine is go. definitely Star Crunch. Um, maybe it's because we like Star Wars, not Star Trek, and we're going to throw this out. Out of this world. All right, next. dude. Okay, so we're going to take a break. A little halftime. Yeah, we need halftime for multiple reasons. But one yes. of them is probably we need to go eat a salad and drink lots of water or just exercise. We need to do something. Or take a nap. So we're, quick halftime and there will be a halftime show. And then we'll be back with the second round of eliminations. We'll be back. We're in the elimination round two. So we have uh, four matchups. We have eight different cakes, donuts, whatever, yeah. ugly strawberry rolls. And- She's uh, so bitter about that. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. But what we're gonna do, we're on zebra cakes and donuts, so. Yeah, so I hope uh, you had a good halftime. I uh, took a nap, um, drank some water. Um, no, I didn't do all that. I probably should have. But I did get some more coffee. Um, because I, I need something to cleanse this out and uh, but we're ready come on we're doing this for science yeah not really but we're doing it for you all because we love you we're, sure. we're threatening our own health for you all because we care all right so let's get let's get into it enough introduction Ooh, hat. so chocolate donuts the winner of the first round and the first round uh, uh, both uh, winners obviously what did they beat cakes. out they beat out powdered donuts and muffins which the yeah. muffins were the worst thing I've ever had <laughs> It's true. And honestly, yeah, so these are two very different things because one's just a donut that you could get, it, which I love these, no, no insult. Yeah, dry from. Mm, these are good. Yep, just as dry as last time, maybe do you, drier. Do you know what my favorite version of this kind of donut is though? Little mini donuts? Cinnamon sugar. Really? No. I'm a big cinnamon sugar fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you can tell we're, we don't want to be wasteful. This is the one we ate earlier. Uh, you okay? I'm sorry, I missed my mouth. Oh, I thought you were like having a special moment. 
Mm-mm, I miss my mouth. Nice. All right. So and I miss the flavor of that compared to this. I I I know my vote. What's yours? Really? No. Oh, okay. All right. So donuts. I was trying to think of something witty, but it's out of here. Next round. All right, and this is our second one. So unicorn cakes and oh, everyone's favorite strawberry Boom. shortcake rolls. All right, so I know what your vote's gonna be, but you have to eat it again. I have to bite it. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to. Do it. We're in a church. It's for you science. <laughs> okay. Never, never knew these existed, but these are amazing. For sure. Good. I will give you that. I'm gonna buy these for my appointment. Yeah. Wow. Eat, eat, eat the it. strawberry. Eat it. Yeah, you said. Oh, I'm gonna give you something so good and then ruin it. What straw? Is that what you're trying to do? Strawberries to what this is? Enjoy it. Isn't it wonderful? It's amazing. Okay. I will. I know what your vote is. It's pretty easy. You yes. didn't want this to even be here. It got better. Really? No. I was like, you're messing with me. All right, but I will give you this. I loved these, but um, my love for them, I still think they're good. I think you're crazy not to like them. But these are like a surprise. These are really good. Yeah, I never heard of these, never expected them, and these are incredible. This feels so, like we're doing an ad for these. At this I, point. Well, yeah, we're not sponsored by Little Debbie, but you know, we're not above that. Are we sure? We're sellouts, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love these. But I think these are amazing, and the fact that you didn't want these to even be in this round, I'll, I'll let you do the honors. <laughs> Next round. <sighs> All right, for the next round, we have Nutty Buddy versus Swiss Cake Rolls, two also classics. Yeah, so let's let's just dive right in. This first is... one, what, what do you want to eat first? Oh, you well, got oh, this one. peanut butter. You're right, because it's on that side. And the thing is, like, it's magic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Chocolate, peanut butter, wafer. That's I, so good. I almost said, how could you screw that up? But I know people have. Mm. All right, Swiss cake roll. Oh my gosh, these are two classics. Yeah. Sorry, we need like a moment here. Ugh. Even though they're both chocolate, they're very different tastes. Mm. Awesome but I know my vote. These are also two twin packs. Like both of these, you feel like you got a deal because there are two in each one of these when you get them as a kid. I know my vote. Do you have a decision? All right, you ready? Should we do a three, two, one? Cause I feel three, like- Three, two, one right over. Cause I yeah. don't know what you're gonna choose. Yeah, ready? Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> we get to go against it. Time for the next tiebreaker. You ready? Um, what is it? Jim. Um, here is our tiebreaker. We grab it so only our finger, so only our thumb can make it. So no space behind our thumb. So no okay. space behind. And your it's thumb. whoever has the most. the most at the end. Yes. Okay. So we just go at it. Yeah. Three, two, okay, one. <laughs> Swiss rolls. Get out of here. All right, the final one of the this elimination round is zebra cake rolls versus star crunch. Mm, All right, dude, let's do it. Zebra cake rolls if first. If we play this right, it could be two zebras in the final. So we'll see. I like it. Oh, this mm. one, that's on me. Mm. Mm. Very good. Not a surprise because we just had it. Yeah. But, you know. So good. It's interesting. They're being creative. They're trying to take a classic and make it into a new shape. Mm. But see, Star Crunch is his own magical thing that's different than anything else they have. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? Mm. I think we should three, two, one, vote. Okay, ready? Um, this is a classic. This is a new take on a classic. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Three, All right. two, one. Yeah. So you want to do the honors? It was good. You're good. Yeah. You should buy it if you want. <laughs> Not the best. best. Yeah. So for our final four that you guys are going to help us decide, oh. we have Star Crunch. Yeah. Zebra. Is it upside down? Yeah. <laughs> Zebra, Zebra cakes. We have. 
<laughs> yeah, I stuck that one in there for you. <laughs> Not we, that one. <laughs> we have Natty Buddy and the rookie. Let's call this the rookie. The surprise. Which we is have unicorn it has a cakes. fighting chance to win. Look so at these. I'm happy with these. These are all good. You guys are going to help us vote on the winners of this. So I'm going to go take a nap. Then eat a salad. I'm gonna run a few miles. Yeah, and probably throw up the first yeah. minute. So, <laughs> all right. See you guys. Hey guys, Pastor Derek here, and uh, as we've been talking about, this is Teen Camp Week, and it's all week, and the theme of the week is wake up. You know, I have a question for you. What do you think is the most annoying sound in the world? You know, I probably have a lot of opinions on that, but for me, the most annoying sound is this. Uh, is that horrible? I hate this sound. If I'm watching like TV or commercials on or something comes on and I hear that sound immediately, I feel tense. I feel stress. It stresses me out first because it's an obnoxious sound. And second, because of what this sound represents. Because you know, this represents the end of rest, the end of sleep, and the beginning of the stresses of the day, responsibility, things we got to take on. And, you know, usually in the morning when you're first waking up, you don't feel as excited to take that on, right? You know, but when I think about this sound, as much as I hate it, I need it. Because I'm one of those people I can't wake up without an alarm clock or one of my kids waking me up. Now, a lot of times it's them before my alarm clock ever wakes up. Their voices are not nearly as annoying. Actually, their voices are beautiful. But still, waking up is not fun. But this sound, if, if they're not in there to wake me up, um, I, I will miss meetings. I will, I will not wake up in time. I can sleep, man. I like sleep. And so as much as I hate this sound, I know I need it in my life because I would miss out on things that I need to take care of, miss out on opportunities, all kinds of things. I mean, what kind of life would it be if we never woke up? I mean, I think they call that a coma. So that's not, you know, that's not really living life, right? You know, I want to look at tonight uh, a wake-up call God gave the Israelite people in the Old Testament. It comes from the book of Jeremiah, and it's in chapter 2 if you want to look it up. We're going to be referencing just part of this chapter. I toyed with reading the whole thing, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to hit some points. Um, when this is being written, it's first of all, it's written uh, by the prophet Jeremiah, and prophets spoke for God. And they were, he was speaking to the Israelite people. And usually the prophets, when they had to speak to people, it uh, wasn't a good situation. They were often that wake-up call. And as we read parts of chapter 2, I'll warn you, it's obnoxious. It's uncomfortable. And it's offensive. But it's something that the Israelites desperately needed. And we're only going to be reading some of it. That we're not even going to hit all of it. But here's just some of it to kind of give us the idea. Now remember, they had uh, the Israelite people, the chosen people of God. They're supposed to be God's representatives in the world. They're supposed to show the world, hey, this is how God intended us to live and to be his shining, his shining light of hope in the world. But they had lost their way. They'd started worshiping other gods and started living as bad or in some cases worse than the surrounding nations who didn't follow God. And so they needed this wake-up call. And so here, verse 10, let's just read part of it from verse 10 to 13. Go west and look at the land of Cyprus. Go east and search through the lands of Kedar. Has anyone ever heard of anything as strange as this? Has any nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they're not gods at all? Yet my people, this is God talking, yet my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. The heavens are shocked at such a thing and shrink back in horror and dismay, says the Lord. For my people have done two evil things. They've abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. He's saying, I've never even seen this. People who worship fake gods, 
don't abandon their gods to go to other nations' gods. Yet you who follow the true living God, the Alpha, the Omega, the creator of all, you are going from God to God to made up thing to made up thing and focusing on this, as he calls it, cracked cisterns instead of fountain of living water, which is a relationship with God. Moving on in verse 23, you say, that's not true. I haven't worshipped the images of Baal, but how can you say that? Go look in any valley in the land. Face the awful sins you have done. You are like a restless, okay, and here's where it gets a little PG-13. You are like a restless female camel desperately searching for a mate. Ugh, awkward. You are like a wild donkey sniffing the wind at mating time. Who can restrain her lust? Who, those who desire her don't need to search, for she goes running to them. When will you stop running? When will you stop panting? after other gods. I did say this got awkward and offensive. Verse 34, your clothing is stained with the blood of the innocent and the poor, though you didn't catch them breaking into your houses, and yet you say, I have done nothing wrong. And it goes on. In this, God reminds them of all the good he's done in their life, how he wants the best for them, yet they turned away from them. And he says, as you saw in verse 34, there's the blood of the innocent on you. Because we got to understand, this is a very harsh chapter. And it's harsh, just like the sound of an alarm clock is harsh to wake us up, because Israelite need woken up. You got to understand where they were. These are the people of God, the people that were supposed to be the example to the world of what it means to be human, as God always intended us to be human. And yet they had lost their way so much at this point in their history that they were worshiping Baal. Now, that might sound not that big of a deal. Okay, they're worshiping some idol. You got to understand, the practices of Baal worship were very violent. They're also very uh, um, promiscuous. They were sexual in nature in a lot of ways, and not the way God intended it. And and there's one, I'm gonna, this is morbid, but I'm gonna share with you just to sh show you how far the Israelite people had gotten. There's this, uh, archeologists have found that there are Baal statues with the torso kind of hollowed out, and they would build a fire in there, and they had the hands like this. And it was common practice for them to put their firstborn in these arms, and they had a crank, and they would just crank it, and the firstborn child as a baby would roll in and be sacrificed to their God in order to bless their household. That's the type of twisted, messed up stuff that the Israelite people were doing as worship. That's why he says the clothing is stained with the blood of the innocent. They had started participating in some terrible practices. They had lost their way. God said, I don't want this for you. I don't want this destructive life for you. I want so much more for you. So he's like, you know what? You need a drastic wake-up call. So this chapter, if you read through it, wow, it gets intense. Because they needed that. And I want you to see this as some vengeful, just God just being angry. It is a God of love. What makes him angry is that there are people being hurt, Right? and this destructive lifestyle, but it is all through a lens of love because God says, you're my children. I want so much more for you. And yet you haven't woken up. You are asleep to who I've called you to be. You need a wake up call. And just like as much as I hate it, I need that wake up call in the morning for my alarm clock. God wants to give Israel an, a wake up call with this harsh chapter. It says, listen, you need to be reminded of who I am, what I've called you to, and you need to be shown the horrors that you are committing because you've turned your back on me. It is hurting your families, it is hurting you, and it's hurting those around you. I want so much more for you. And that's what God calls for each one of us. You may be like, I'm not worshiping Baal, I'm not practicing human sacrifice. I, I hope, I hope not. But maybe you need a wake-up call. Because there are different times in our lives we need that wake-up call from God. And it's not always pleasant. I hope it doesn't have to be as harsh as, as uh, Jeremiah 2. But uh, maybe we need that wake-up call, especially right now. In the midst of this weird time we find ourselves in with social distancing and COVID-19, we're tired of hearing about that. But you know what? It can get so draining that sometimes, because you know some of us, were, uh, you, you may not be able to meet in person. That's why we want to offer this online. And maybe you're like, well, I don't even feel motivated to check out the online thing. This is one of the few we've actually checked out. It, it can be easy to put our faith on the back burner. Because there's so much craziness going on. And even though these are times we should even uh, crab in our faith even more, we can kind of just get numb. Maybe you're like, I'm not doing anything bad, but you haven't really grown in your faith. You're just kind of there. 
problem is you don't just stay there. You start going down this path, making compromise after compromise after compromise and making bad choices. So my question for you is, are you awake in your faith? Are you awake to who God has called you to be? Are you awake to his love? Maybe you need to wake up to God loves you. You matter. God created you with a beautiful purpose for your life. And he, your very existence gives him immeasurable joy. Maybe you need to remind you that. Maybe you need to wake up to that, that you're not junk. You may have been surprised to your parents, but you're not a mistake. You are a beautiful creation of the Most High God, and He loves you. He died for you. Maybe you need to be awake to that of uh, that reminder. Maybe you need to wake up to the fact that you know what? I need to live a life that God has for me, not making these choices that are destructive. We call those that sin. And God calls us not to sin, not because he doesn't want us to have a good time, but because he wants to save us from a destructive life. So there are three ways we can respond to God's wake-up call in in our lives. We can be like the Israelites tonight. Did you see that? They're like, no, we're not doing that. And God's like, I know what you're doing. See, they thought they'd hidden it because I don't know if you know, but for a lot of these very uh, morbid worship practices, they would uh, uh, plant these groves. So they would plant, plant evergreen trees surrounding it because you know the, the, the needles are always up and it would hide the terrible practices because they're ashamed of what they were doing uh, in the name of worship. They're, they thought they had hidden, but God says, I see that. You can't hide that from me. And it hurts me because it's hurting you and it's hurting others. We can deny it like the Israelites did. Or we can hit the snooze, right? I, I'm, I'll admit it. I'm, I'm a lot better than I used to be. But when I was in college, I was a bad snooze button hitter. I remember I would hit it for like three and a half hours straight. One time I did that. That's ridiculous, right? My roommate was about ready to throw me through the wall. But you know what? I, I did. I struggled with that. Maybe you're like, I'll do it later. God, keep putting God off and, and, and snooze. But the problem is we're still sleeping. We're asleep to who? To his joy, to his love, to his redemption, and asleep to his calling in our lives. And that can lead us down a dark road. And then our third option is wake up. Wake up to what God is trying to teach you and trying to show you. So my question for you is, are you awake? Is your faith awake? Not just when you're at church, even though, I, you know, uh, church looks a lot different right now, so it might be a little different for you, but not even these contexts that we call like Christian experiences, because every part of our life should be living out our faith when we're alive, as we're awake. When you're, you know, at your home, is your faith awake? When you're alone, is your faith awake? When you're, maybe in those limited contexts, you're able to be with friends, some of you are, hanging out with people, are you, is your faith awake? Some of you start part-time jobs. Is your faith awake there? Hmm. Maybe even some of you have been able to go on a date during all this. Is your faith awake then? Is your faith awake? God wants you to be awake and alive and, and living as he always called you to live. So my question is, are you going to wake up? I pray that you do. I pray that you're awake to what God has for you because you know what? You're not going to miss it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you call each and every single one of us to a life of redemption, of hope, and of love. And we get to be a shining light, a shining example of that to others. And Lord, I pray wherever we are, may we not hit the snooze button to your wake-up call. May we not deny it like the Israelites, but Lord, may we say, yes, I need to wake up. Whatever area, prod that in our lives, an area of our life that we say, yeah, I need to wake up in my faith. I need to wake up to something you're teaching me, something you're trying to show me during this time and grow, and not get just complacent about it but be on fire for you. And Lord, help us this week of teen camp to continue to let us work in our lives. And Lord, just help us to share your love in a world that desperately, desperately needs it. It's in your holy and divine name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm so glad you're able to join us online tonight. And before we go, as we do each week, I want to remind you that you matter. You belong. And God has a purpose for your life. Till next week, see ya.